Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 789. Hey, if you want to download this workbook 788 to 791, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video here we have some accounting records entered. We have some uh, employee's name, the month, uh, the type of job they have, salary, allowances, taxes, etc. So whatever uh, data they have, they need to take all the Joes and put it in a table like this so that they can print it out. And what we want to be able to do is simply change, whoops, we want to simply, uh, hopefully I get rid of, we want to change it to chin here and have the report change. And not only that, but as I add new records to this table, if I type a Joe here, watch what happens to April. So I'm going to come down here and then I type in my April and then I put my numbers, whatever they may be, right? So they're automatically showing up here. So that's what we want to do. Now, this is a table feature. I'd never put the actual tape report down below the table. I just did it to show it on the, the first part of this video, what we're after here. So let's go over here. Here's our data set. Here's going to be our report. Now, the cool thing is we'll create a report on one sheet here and then simply copy it over and we can change whatever criteria we want for extracting the records. Now, part of the tricky part here is that uh, we have a Joe here and a Joe here and a Joe here. So there's three Joes. In essence, there's three rows. So we're going to do a two-way lookup here. And there's duplicates here. So we need row one, row four, and row seven. And so we, we got the row, but then we're going to need multiple column numbers. We're going to need column and our, our range for extracting data that's going to have a row number and a column number is going to be this. So we need row 1, 4, 7, etc. But we're also going to need column 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's go over here and look. In this column for Joe, for January, if you look back over here, oh, so Joe's January, the row is going to be 1 all the way down. It's going to be fours all the way down. right? But since we're doing a two-way lookup, it's also going to have to have a row number of one and a column number of one. But when we get when I get down our formula down here, it's going to have to have a row number of one and a column number of two. Similarly, over here, it's going to have to be four, one, for two, etc. So what if we can build a formula that as we copy it down and over will automatically increment these numbers, uh, we can use simply the index function and do a two-way lookup. Let's do the hard part first. The hard part is the ones and the fours. Now, right, so one, four, seven. Now the per th this was actually a post of the Mr. Excel message board, and this person said they had 2010. So I'm going to do this assuming that we have 2010. All right, and I'm going to use the aggregate function. Now, notice we have multiple row numbers. In essence, we're looking up multiple Joes and getting the row number. So I'm going to use the aggregate, because the aggregate can let us um, use the small function and build arrays into it, which we're going to do, and not the, the aggregate function does not require Control-Shift-Enter, because it's programmed to handle uh, arrays. Aggregate. Now, only the last few functions here. Uh, let's see, after, oh, now I can't remember what it is. I think it's 14 and later. Oh, yeah, 14 and later, all of these allow, the aggregate function allows arrays. None of these do, which I wish they, they did, but nevertheless, they don't. Notice 15th is, is small function. So I'm going to type a 15, comma, and this is what's so cool. It can ignore all sorts of things. And I have a bunch of function uh, videos at YouTube on aggregate. All I got to do is search for aggregate function. But one of the one we want here is ignore errors. And that, because if we're extracting row numbers, only a few of them are going to have Joe. The rest will be errors. So that'll um, deal with that, comma. And now the array, right? So we're going to need a, an array of row numbers. Now, I'm on sheet report, and I need to go over here. 
So the row numbers, I'm going to create in parentheses the row numbers that I think our data set is like 1 to 15. So I need the, the numbers 1 to 15. And then I'm going to divide those by our criteria, which will be Joe. And it will be like a, a Boolean uh, uh, string here, or Boolean array here. So I'm going to do row. I'm going to go back over to the sheet. And I'm going to get all of these rows right here. And it doesn't really matter which one I do. I'm going to hit F4. Notice uh, one other thing. We are going to convert this to a table, but I'm going to build my formulas before I convert it to table. And guess what? They will be dynamic. You don't have to use table formula nomenclature. All right, so I'm, I got A2 to A11. I'm going to close parentheses on that. That's the row part of it right there. And then that gives me 2 to 11. So I don't want that. I want 1 to 10. So I'm going to do subtract row of that one right there. If I highlight this right here and hit the F9 key, you can see me, it gives me 0 to 9. I'm going to Control Z. So I need to add 1 back to that. And now I can see the formula down here. Okay, So all of that is going to be in the green parentheses there. That gives me the row numbers. Ah, but I only want the ones with Joe, so I'm going to divide it by, and in parentheses, now I have to go back over here. Actually, I can start off. I'm going to notice that Joe is in A2. That means the criteria is in A2. I'm going to go back over here, highlight the column with all of the names, F4 to lock it. Anytime that is equal to A2. Close parentheses. I'm going to do this trick over here just to jump over to the other sheet. F9, right? And you can see that now I get a bunch of trues and falses. So only uh, where Joe is represented are there trues. Control Z. And now I'm going to come down here and highlight just so. We did divide. So now I can highlight all of this, the rows divided by that, in F9. So what's going to happen is there's our 1, there's our 4, there's our 7. There's all of our errors. The 6 will say ignore the errors, and the 15's, the 15 will be the small function. And as we copy it, we'll take the f this one first, then this one, then this one. Control Z, comma. That's the array, comma. Oh, and what's the K? Remember, it is small function. So as we go this way, we need it to go from first smallest to second smallest, because remember, we need 1 and 4. And then here, the third smallest will be 7. So I'm going to have to do the columns. And this this will allow us to increment numbers in the middle of our formula, 1, 2, 3. And I'm sitting in cell B5, so I'm going to type dollar sign B5. I've locked the column, but not the row, colon B5. Right? Now, the cool thing about this is as I copy down, it'll be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. We've locked this, but not this. But it doesn't matter when we go in down how many columns are from B to B. There's one. But when I copy it this way, that B will be locked, but that B will turn to a C. And so we'll, it will ask the question, how many columns are there? Two. So I'm going to close parentheses and watch this. I'm going to not Control Shift Enter, but just uh, Control Enter. Notice no curly brackets up there, and I'm going to copy it down. Oops, I forgot to lock something. Yep, I did. Now I've highlighted, I've copied this down. The whole range is highlighted. The active cell is right there. I'm going to hit F2, and I forgot to lock this in all directions, so I put my cursor there and hit F4. Now, to repopulate all these, I'm going to Control Enter. If you have more than one cell highlighted and you have it in edit mode when you control enter it populates all of the cells with whatever it is you have. Now I'm going to copy this over. And there we have it. There's 1 4 7 10 10. This num error will deal with with the if error function because it means there's no joes for may yet. Now I'm going to come back over here. Um, oh okay. No. I'm, okay, so that's fine. Now that's just the row number. Now, the column number is going to be uh, pretty easy. We're going to have to match. Let's go see how this is set up. Over here in the index, we'll have this range right here. But notice the column numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we, those are labels that are also over here. Actually, I should show you how I did that. 
because if you're setting up this report, um, you want to make sure that these names here that represents the column uh, headers over on this other sheet are exactly the same. So I'm going to highlight the whole range and then the active cell at the top I'm going to type equals transpose. That's the transpose function. It takes a horizontal range and makes it vertical. So I'm going to go over here. I've ho Notice I've highlighted the exact number of cells that represent, and these are rows, that over here represent the exact uh, number of columns. Close parenthesis, and this is an array function, so I control shift enter. How did I do this? I just did January and then copied it over to February. Now we can simply do a match. We can use the match function. We've got the hard part done, but we use the match function. Say match where is that in the relative range over here? One. Match function, whoops. Match function where is salary back over here? Two. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start my index. Now, th that's array. But before we even do that, this big aggregate, F9, that's just delivering what? The row number, Control Z. So I'm actually going to type a comma. You can see it's the row number. And I'm coming to the end and type a comma. Now, that column number, when we come over here, that'll be the match function matching this. But right now, let's come over here, the array. I'm going to come over to this sheet right here and highlight that range right there. It's got all the actual data in a two-way table, rows and columns. I'm going to hit the F4 key. Now I'm going to come back. I'm not going to come. If I come back, if I click back on that sheet right now, that reference right there will turn to report. So I'm going to click at the end here. And now click back over here. It'll put a sheet reference in, but now I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to type, actually down here I'll do it. So now we have what we want. We have the two-way array, the row number, and now we're going to do the column number, match. And I can't click here because it'll put a sheet reference in. So now I'm just going to type. And it's this post needs to tell us the first column. But as I copy this way, it needs to say 1111111 column. But as I move down, it needs to say column 2. So I'm going to say dollar sign, and that's A5 colon A. That's it. That'll be our match criteria. So post, as we copy the formula, this way will always be the criteria. And as we copy down in the second row, salary will. Comma, and now look up array. I click on this sheet right here and highlight very carefully just the column labels or field names. And I'm going to hit F4 to lock it. And then I'm going to type comma 0. This is an exact match. Close parentheses. Close parentheses. Control Enter. So what I did there is after I put in the range, I locked it. Typed a comma. The match type is 0 because I'm looking up an exact match. These are the lookup array does not have sorted words. And then I closed off the index. All right, And I don't have to control shift enter because we're using aggregate. So control enter. I'm going to double click and send it down. One more. And then copy it over. It's going to give us our num error. But so there we have it. So we've, in essence, uh, taken over here for January for Joe. because our criteria is Joe. We've taken from over here a row of data and displayed it vertically. And then when we copy over here, it got the next Joe. Now, we can simply uh, edit this, and we can get rid of those nums with if error. Now, if error is new in 2007, aggregate is new is new in 2010. If error is just amazing, that value, I'm just going to put that huge, gigantic thing in there. And any time it comes out to be an error, so I'm going to type a comma. And you can see if error, I'm just going to put, hey, if it's an error, double quote for blank. Close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down, and copy it over. And there we have our uh, record. Now let's test it. We're going to go over and convert it to a table. By the way, this little piece we don't need here. If you were in 2000, 
And if you couldn't use if error in earlier version like 2003, then we'd have to do some count here. But we don't have to do that here. Let's come over here. Let's convert this to a table. Click in any one cell, Control T, Enter. Now, a cool thing here about tables, and these came in in 2003. It used to be called list in 2003. Now it's table in 2007 and 10. But the table, we have dynamic ranges. So as we add new records, any formulas, charts, etc., pivot tables will update. But check this out. We didn't use formula nomenclature. These are just regular cell references. The fact that we are con just converted that table over there, these all of a sudden have become dynamic. And we'll check it out. Let's try it. First, I'm going to change this to Sue. So now I have January, February, March. I'm going to add a record for April. And notice, there's a couple ways to add new records. If you click in the cell below, it automatically does it. Control Z. You can also Control Z. You can click here and hit Tab. And I'm going to type April. And uh, Sue is an admin. And then let's just say 1,000. And I'm going to enter 25 bucks for each just to see if it works. I'm so excited. Look at that. Boom. It shows up here. Now, the next question is we want to easily replicate this report. And so one way we could do we could do is we just copy the sheet over. If I call it report and then parentheses one, the fact that I put parentheses one when I copy this over, it'll automatically increment to report two. Now we could right click, uh, move or copy, create a copy, select whichever uh, sheet we want it before. I'm going to click escape, but the best way to do this is click on the report, and when you click and drag up, notice the piece of paper is blank. That means I'm moving it, and see that arrow? That means I'm moving it. But as soon as I hold Control, see the plus on the piece of paper? That means I'm copying it. Very important, you let go of your mouse, but not the Control key. And then you can just go boop, boop, or however many. We only have uh, right click Delete. So now I can have a report for Joe, a report for Sue, and a report for Chin. All right, that was quite. Uh, Quite a little uh, feat there, going from this data set here and needing multiple reports. And a couple uh, tricks about extracting from a two-way table. All right, we'll see you next trick.